and talent can be developed through hard work, good strategies, persistence, dedication, and input from others. Where focus goes, energy flows. So focus your energy on continuous learning and stop wasting time thinking about looking smart. Build resistance, build vulnerability, build courageousness, and face adversity with a smile. Become comfortable with uncomfortable. You know, the only person that you need to prove anything to is you. Imperfect action trumps perfect inaction. Stop wasting time and get on with it. Failure is part of learning, so start learning by taking action. Christian Lavolsi, welcome back to the Business Life Hot Seat. It is Wednesday and we're here to chat all about business and life and everything in between. Uh, how's your day been today? I have uh, I've been in a six, seven hour board meeting. So I've just walked in the door uh, <laughs> and uh, I also drove an hour and 45 minutes to get there and an hour and 45 minutes back. So I've, uh, when you called me, I'm like, what are you doing, Ring? I'm like, oh, the hot seat. Yes. <laughs> and I was just uh, doing some cello lessons with Leo. So hence the music <laughs> standing right behind me. Like, this is all just happened. Yeah, I was just hanging out backstage and I thought, hmm, it's really unusual for Christian to be late. So I may just give you a quick call and find out what's going on. So welcome. It's been a massive day for you, as is every day at the moment. Uh, we had Karim filling in for you last week as you were tied up with some clients. So uh, we appreciate your time and being here with us and sharing your insights on the hot topic of the week. So last week or a couple of weeks ago, we asked a poll out on LinkedIn and we we're talking all about leveraging your personal network in business activities. And we asked the question of like, do you leverage your personal network for business purposes? Now, 58% of people said that they did. 17% of people said absolutely no way. They don't sell to friends. And 25% of people said that it really depends. It depends on the situation. So let's jump straight into it today, Christian. My first question for you is, what is the benefit of mixing your personal and professional networks? I think first, let's, let's be really clear. You know me well enough, so this is either a trick question or... There is no such thing as personal and business when you're in business. That is such an employee mindset. It is, it is frightening, right? Like I have, I work with companies who, who when I first come into the organization, their people don't even self promote the product they sell. And I find that absolutely disturbing, but in a world where employees want to be paid more and have an incredible amount of self worth. If you're not selling the products of the company that you work with, then you're only serving yourself, which means you're not part of the culture, you're not part of the team, or you work for someone you don't want to um, want to be around. So then, therefore, then that's a reflection on you. Okay, um, this is a really thing. It's, it's one thing that shits me off above most things. Um, now. What are the benefits of mixing personal and professional networks? Well, again, to me, there isn't. It, it is either or, right? Um, I don't sell to my friends. Um, my friends come and buy from me. It's that simple. I'm one of the best in the trade, uh, you know, in Australia. If you know, and I'd like to think in some parts of the world, especially English-speaking countries, because I don't speak uh, a lot of the other languages. Um, I do speak more than one language, um, uh, but it, it comes down to, you know, if you uh, have value and you provide value, then it shouldn't matter who you're selling to. Mm. You know, and I think that's the that's where everyone's getting really confused with. Oh my God, it's my personal life. Or, oh no, no, I don't, I don't talk about my work when I'm at home. You've got a duty as an employee to upsell your company, your products, and you know, like that. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine anyone that works for me that wouldn't sell me. Mm -hmm. Doreen, there's your, uh, there's your button. It is. Yes. Thank you for your insights and, and really 
uh, showcasing what that is because you do see a lot of people that will use totally different social media accounts for work as they do for personal. And obviously it's important to have a line of separation between, you know, work and, and personal life. But, yeah, it's interesting to, to view it from that perspective. So, my- But hang on, Simone, Simone, that's different, right? That's mm. not selling. That's not selling. Um, and, that, you know, separating your networks is, is a very different thing. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I, we had a, a recent conversation at a client event where a couple of people raised the issue of privacy and, you know, not wanting people to know that that was them. And I'm just like, and I turned around and said, well, then the best privacy is to not be on the social media channels. Mm. I said, you can't be in both. You can't have your foot in and, 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 and then decide that you want to come out whenever you want to. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's like, you know, you cross the road, you take a risk. You know, I yeah. saw this morning that, uh, tragically, a couple of children have been hit by a truck at a mm-hmm. pedestrian crossing. It turns out the truck went through a red light. You know, the yeah. risk of those two poor children crossing is no different to, and I'm not by any means, I'm not comparing the tragedy to this. I'm merely saying the risk of them crossing the road is the same risk you put by being out on um, on social sphere because mm. everything you put on the social sphere is public and yeah. it doesn't go away. There is a mm. digital record all the time. So I think people get confused between privacy and their personal and business networks. And I always say to people, if you're thinking privacy, then don't be on social media. Yeah. Don't be on it full stop, you know. Live, live, you know, lock yourself away in the mountains somewhere and have no credit cards, have no nothing because that's your digital footprint. And and look, I'm not one of those people that would ever, you know, I, I think I, I, I did a video seven or eight years ago where I actually proclaimed that privacy was dead. Mm. And, you know, I had 50% of people going, now nah, you don't know what you're talking about. And, you know, maybe 20%, yep, yeah, we agree. And I think it was 30% who had no opinion whatsoever. Turns yeah. out I was right. You know, and yeah. that was maybe eight, nine, maybe 10 years ago now. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. and, you know, and that's a real thing. And I think if you have children, you've got to think about that. And, you know, but I think we just need to be more socially careful and more conscious. I don't yeah. think it's about um, not being inclusive and not being um, within those networks. Mm. So I think you've just got to look after your own, your own self and, and you're entitled to have whatever decision you, you're entitled to. Make the decision that's best for you and your family. That's what I'm also saying. But yeah. you can't confuse a personal professional network. It's, you know, if you sell something of value with integrity, then it won't matter who you sell it to. Yeah, great points there. And I'm sure that heaps of people are going to misconstrue and you know, <laughs> everything I've said and, and take little snippets of it. But I think ultimately, um, and anyone that knows me, I, I don't care, right? Like, yeah. as in the reality of it is, it's, you do what's best for you and your family. No one can take that away. I would never tell you to do anything but that, and, uh, and I respect that decision. But, yeah, in my opinion, there is no such thing as personal professional networks. It's it's one network. One, yeah, one. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, so my question, my second question for you is why do you think people struggle with the concept of selling to their friends or people that are in their networks? Why do you think people find that so difficult? Because they lack confidence, mm. because they have self-limiting beliefs, because mm. they have fixed mindsets, because they're um, they 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 don't believe in their own product, right? Mm. They don't believe in the person they're working for. They don't believe in the company that they're working for. They're the real reasons, right? And I'd love to if we could take this live and have a full debate over. It, I'd love to bring people on, but I've I've studied the human psychology pathway of this, and. Mm-hmm. They're they're all bullshit excuses why you can't sell to friends. Yeah, a lot of it is you don't have the confidence. You don't believe in your own ability. You don't think you're worthy, right? Um, You know, I have no problem selling to my friends, but I wouldn't actually go, hey, come and buy my product. I don't have any, I have no time as it is. Hmm. But if one of my mates came to me and said, hey, listen, Christian, I really, you know, need your advice. And I have plenty of friends that have, you know, that have come to me for advice and paid me. Right, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I choose not to charge them, you know, depending on uh, how many dollars are in the bank, in the sense of 
you know, the, 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 you know, what we've done for one another, depending on the friendship. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I back myself. Mm. So, you know, the products and services that I sell, I mean, uh, yeah, I'll give you a good example. I sold, when, when I went from owning my own companies to then taking a gig while I was rebuilding, um, I was selling solar power. When I was director of sales and marketing, we took a business from zero to millions, right? Within a very short period of time. I believed in the product suite so much that I sold it to everyone. And those systems are still on people's route roofs with no problems. Mm. So, you know, I, it, it, when you sell to people you know, it, you, 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 you certainly put more effort into an outcome. But ultimately, I treat everybody the same. I wouldn't sell shit. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, that's my integrity. Why would I sell a shit product? I'd leave and go and, and do something that's worthwhile. So again, yeah. I, you know, why wouldn't you sell to your friends? Look inwards mm. and ask yourself the tough question. And if you're too chicken shit, go and stand in front of the mirror in a bathroom and say, well, why don't I sell to my friends? You know, ask yourself the real question. I mean, I, it sounds like I'm being incredibly aggressive today, but I'm not. After seven hours of sharing a board meeting, uh, which was excellent, um, mm. you know, and then taking coaching calls for an hour and a half drive. You know, yeah. it's just, these, these are great questions, but they're, they're, they're stupid. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, I sit here and I think, they're great questions. These are problems that people have, but why? Yeah. You know, let's get to the heart and solve it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. Very true. Okay. So my third question, this always follows on nicely, right? So, do you believe, and let's use the word referrals because people feel more comfortable with that than talking about selling, right? If we talk about referring, do you think that, do you believe that referrals are the best way to sell your product or service? Look, uh, the best form of advertising is care. Mm. Um, uh, the other best form of advertising is word of mouth. Mm. And the other name for word of mouth is referrals. So yeah. uh, absolutely. I mean, referrals... Now, if you rely on referrals in your business, you're in trouble, uh, mm. squarely and solely, even if what you do is amazing. I mean, we we most of our work is referral work, but we are constantly out in the market because you need to remind people that you exist to be referred, right? Yeah. And you need to always do an outstanding job. And remember, getting a proper referral means you've done something pretty amazing to someone for them to put their reputation on the line, right? And you need to respect this. You, you know, someone is putting their reputation on the line saying, hey, go and see this person. There is no greater honour or distinction in a referral. Mm. Yeah, but again, I don't treat my referrals any better than I treat the cold inbound person that comes in off the street because I work to a standard that's here. Mm. Yeah, and I think the message from today is have a higher standard of yourself. If you, if you, if you genuinely have a product that changes the world or changes or, 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 or solves a massive problem, then you should be able to offer it to everyone. You're doing your friends an injustice if you are not putting it in front of them, right? Like, you know, I'm passionate about this. I'm not actually angry. I just I just see so many people waste their talent, right? Yeah. Sitting yeah. there in the corner, you know, um, idly waiting for referrals. Get off your ass, mm. right? You know, I started my life in door knocking. Well, I started washing dishes at 12. But I started, you know, I needed money to go to Europe and I just went out and door knocked. Yeah. You want to be taught, you want to be taught rejection, you want to be taught grit, you want to be taught <laughs> resilience. Go <laughs> knock on doors, right? Selling the home telephone lines 25 years ago. <laughs> I mean, shit, young people of today, you have smartphones. <laughs> you know, we didn't even have dial-up internet when I was 17 years old. Oh, yeah, no, we did. Yeah, I've been there. I feel that old calling on a telephone is a lot more pleasant, and that's still not pleasant, but a lot more pleasant than actually having the door slammed in your face over oh, and over. The door slammed, abuse, phenomenal, mm. right? Yeah. But you know what I'm saying is, your friends are never going to close the door on you. Mm. And and you know, you've, what is it? The fear that, that you don't trust them, the fear you're going to uh, your relationship's going to fall apart. Are you kidding mm. me? Let me give it to you this way. You sell the only cancer curing treatment in the world. Your friend gets cancer. You're not going to sell it to them. Mm. I mean, fucking logic, right? Like, it's just, 
that, that that's probably the best analogy. And you know me, I love my analogies. But that's yeah. the best analogy or the best example you can give someone. Mm. Now you you have developed a cancer busting uh, remedy that could save your friend's life. You're not going to sell it to them. Mm. You know, yeah. you can give them a discount if you feel guilty, or if you're <laughs> a billionaire because you've created something so amazing, you can give it to them for free. Yeah. But come on, people. Yes. It's because you fear. You you live in fear. You think mm. you're not enough. Right? Wake up. You were born worthy. The moment you were born, you were worthy. The moment you breathe, breathe life, you were worthy. Mm. Right? And never forget that. No matter how difficult your life is, no matter the trials and tribulations that you have faced. You know, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. You know, I mean, this art room <laughs> it is a bit of a mess. It needs some work. <laughs> Uh, I wish I could show you, but Lucy's been painting and she's done some silver gilding and it looks spectacular. Um, but cool. in, in turn, there is silver everywhere <laughs> and glue bottles everywhere. And then I've got Leo trying to practice the cello. I've got <laughs> art, my artwork, this is different. And then I've got, you know, a, a cabinet of 192 bottles now of whiskey that I might just attend to after this call but that uh, but yeah what i'm saying is you shouldn't, you shouldn't, huh i'm sure david box would uh, love to have a conversation with you about that whiskey cabinet where is he you. where is he he's not even online no one's even online no one even listens to our show like seriously like i sit here and i think to myself and then you know if you ever do listen to these you're listening to these on replay do that thing that everyone else does put hashtag replay i want to actually see if people watch this stuff but i certainly know that People watch it because they're watching the replays later. Yeah. And, um, and and let us know. And guess what? Today, we don't even have an event to try and sell you or anything because yeah, we, we have finished. finished our show. It's done. The what? The yes. It's done. And we're hugely successful. Um, we we got a, we got a uh, shit, I don't even know, it's a couple of thousand percent ROI on the, on the road show. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel good. Um, it was very, it was, it was so much fun. And yeah. so many awesome people that we met along the journey. And, you know, we've got so many people that joined our customers on demand program. They're already winning. It's like, you know, I love winners. You know, these are people that turned up. Sydney, if you can hear me, man, you guys, worst turnout rate in the country. <laughs> you know, we had hundreds of people register and 27% show up rate. Yeah. Mate, if you're going to make a commitment, right? follow through because yeah. uh, the out of the out of those people that turned up the ones that have signed on already have actually already made three to four times the roi so you yeah. know i mean and there's, there's another message for today i mean i'm on fire so let me just give it to people um <laughs> is you know, if you're going to commit to something show up mm. right you know or have the common decency to turn around to someone and say i won't be there now lucky that we know that the event game has a low turnout, right? So even though we knew that those people, we had a full sellout, full room. I think it was what three chairs empty yeah. in Sydney. So, but you know, you sit there and you're just like, "Come on, man!" I think what well, I must have, I must have raised it about four or five times in the presentation too, mm -hmm. um, because you know, I'm a, I'm a person that's accountable. I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Yeah. You know, if I say I'm going to help you make money, I help you make money. That, that, that's not bullshit. That's actually a thing. Yeah. You know? And if I'm going to kick your ass, I'll tell you, I'm going to kick your ass. And you expect an ask you. Yes, uh, well, uh, it's that was my been a week of things, hasn't it, Simone? It has. Oh, Param's joined in. Param did turn up in Sydney. So thank you, Param. <laughs> we loved seeing you at our event in Sydney. Hey, well, what do you mean? You just see comments? I can't see any. Oh, yes. Param. Hello, Param. Param. Watching us live on LinkedIn, he did turn up to our Sydney event. So we thank you. He is one of the winners that did hold true to his word. Now we are down in Melbourne this weekend. We have our momentum weekend for our mastermind clients. So I'm sure they are going to be so thrilled to have you um, grill them on Friday as we go through our mastermind process. And we're focusing the weekend on sales and setting up um our next quarter which is really exciting everyone is pumped i spoke to them all today i oh, look it's it's going to be amazing i um you know i uh, I've, I've got some really cool ideas uh particularly for sunday 
um, you know, these guys are, are going to be doing 35, 40 hours deep diving into their business. It's just phenomenal. And I love this. Like, you know, sure, I don't like the 6 a.m. red eye to Melbourne and then uh, flying back late Monday night. But, you know, the feature comforts of, um, you know, lounge access and other bits and pieces makes it much more palatable. But I certainly enjoy the time with my people and, um, and, and seeing them win. And I'm really excited. You know, these are people that are committed. They made yeah. a committed to be. They made a commitment to be part of uh, a 12 month program. Um, I look forward to them you know, signing back up for another 12 months uh, in July. Um, we are opening up some spots, aren't we, Simone? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, criteria is you must be turning over a million dollars at least, mm -hmm. um, and you must employ people. So um, it's that's our criteria. Um, on a case by case basis, I might look at someone who has incredible potential, but it's a certain you know, minimum requirement for us to be part of it. And I think the best part is that we've got so much stuff happening this year, um, and it all comes down to Christian having time to to put paint the final bit of the it artwork. Is. Yes. So uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, it should be really exciting. And, and and look, thank you to to all the people that actually do come online and hang out with us and. People that send us the questions and answer the the um, the, the 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 surveys, the polls. Yeah, you know, without you guys, we wouldn't have any content. And and mm -hmm. I think that that's really important to acknowledge you. Um, you know, but follow through. You know, really live with purpose. Like you know, when you wake up in the morning, you'll never hear me complain. Getting up in the morning, I, I just don't get people who who complain. You know, I, Lucy even says it to me. She goes, "You just." No alarm, nothing. You just get up, same time, every single day, you know, 445 roughly. You know, it's that same within three or four minutes, and I'm up. And I'm so happy to be up and alive. You know, that's the one big thing I think people, you know, you gotta start your morning that way. So anyway, I'm just ranting. You are. <laughs> we love it. We all need a pep talk occasionally to get us fired up and, and get going for the rest of the week. We're, we're down the first quarter of the year is over already in just a few short days. So if you haven't taken action for 2023 yet, you need to jump on that right now. Otherwise, before you know it, it's going to be Christmas and you've gone and thrown away a whole year. So Christian Lavolsi, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate your insights as always. We'll see you next Wednesday on the Business Life Hot Seat. And we welcome all of your feedback and comments. So please feel free to reach out and get in touch to know more about our programs and how we can help you. Have a good night. Bye.